<laughs> Hello, my name is Gleb. Uh, I'm a software developer from Ukraine, Kyiv, uh, working with Python Django more than six years, uh, currently employed at Django Stars. And today uh, I want uh, to show, to share with you actually a lot of information, so I have to be really fast to fit on the time. Um, and uh, I hope we will have some time for questions, but I don't promise it. And actually, I want to start with motivation. Why should we actually uh, need to mix Django and SQL Alchemy Core, which benefits we can get, and in which cases that could be useful for us? So actually, the main use case is uh, data analysis application. Uh, so your application works mostly with aggregations, so you don't work with uh, like single lines of table, you don't have REST API, uh, or you don't modify single rows of your data, so you're only interested in uh, aggregations and calculations. So you likely will have a lot of data, so you have your queries to be really performant and precise. Um, and maybe you could have some, uh, if you have some pattern of the, your pages, you could build some uh, wire which will generate such advanced queries for you. Uh, so you maybe have such wire, and it's really easy to build it with uh, SQL Alchemy. Um, and maybe you also want to you design your queries in SQL in the console, you check performance, how it works, then you satisfy it and you want to move them to Python. It's really easy to do it with uh, SQL Alchemy also. And uh, maybe your data source, which you work with, doesn't natively support it uh, by Django and maybe third-party applications, uh, which provide the support and integration, they are not uh, fit your needs. So this is um, the main use case when you likely should uh, check this tool. So I really like Django. I really like Django RAM. It's a fantastic tool. Um, you even can forget how to SQL. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's... Uh, greatly evolves, uh, it, it, it allows you to um, focus on the implementing of business features instead of doing some low level stuff, so you really can pr deliver your uh, features much uh, faster and more reliable way. Um, and uh, in the last releases, uh, Django got uh, a lot of cool features, uh, so like subqueries, window functions, so uh, you already heard it yesterday. Um, from Sigurd, and uh, so you have less reasons to switch to raw SQL. Uh, but if we build the data analysis application, uh, Django RAM has uh, its own specific, so let's talk about this. So for example, if we want to, we have properties and we have owners, and we want to find, uh, for example, five properties, which in the city, which start with the letter key, and we want to uh, get the username of the owner. So we do in select related, which uh, performs uh, left outer join. Um, we can also limit uh, amount of fields which we want. So query is a bit simpler, but yeah, in Python it's less readable. Uh, so I want you to focus on these two lines. So as you see, we have uh, left outer join and we have limit. Um, and if we see the explain uh, how in which order this operation performed, uh, we see that. Uh, First of all, we find the properties which we are interested in. It's a huge amount of properties. And only then we join to each of the row the property. We join owners, and only, only after that we're doing a limit. So this is not performance. This is not the way that we want to execute the query. Likely, we want to have a query like this. So um, we have nested select. It's like correlated subquery. And we select only fields we're interested in. So we are doing limit there. And uh, then we join um, users to th these five rows. So it's very performant. It's good, believe me. You have not to read it. Um, and uh, with SQL Alchemy Core, uh, such query will look like this. And as you see on the first line, uh, we simply build this nested select, which uh, uh, do in a limit, so this subquery. And we simply insert it in other select uh, and perform join. So it's really straightforward, and you can really fast understand what's going on underneath. Uh, in Django RM, this query will look like this. Uh, that's why, because uh, all your query which you build, it starts from model, model like declare for you uh, the from clause which will be used uh, in the query. So uh, the subqueries that we have, they could be used um, in the select where having, but we can't put it into the from, so we can't make select from select. So we, of course, can build a similar feature uh, 
uh, similar query, uh, we will can get uh, a primary case of the properties which we're interested in and put it into subquery. So it's also performant, so it's okay. Uh, but this example showed us that actually Django RAM and SQL Alchemy cores, they are on different wires and they are designed to solve different needs uh, and different problems. So uh, in Django stack, we have uh, underlying non-public API, which is a, a query set dot query. Uh, but documentation doesn't uh, uh, recommend to use it. Um, but uh, in your SQL Alchemy core, um, it's like on top of the SQL, so it's very close to SQL. And as you can see, uh, it's very readable. Uh, it's really easy to understand, and you can build your query easily. Uh, on the other hand, as you see uh, Django RAM sample, the first filter uh, it's would be actually the where clause. The values, it would be a group by. Uh, annotate would be a list of fields, a list of aggregations, which you want to perform on the query. And the last filter would be actually a heading clause, which will apply on the top of your query. So it's not string directly mapped to the SQL level. And when you're building queries uh, with Jung, uh, with or on ORM, such queries, you really feel that you don't have enough freedom. Uh, and I want to show one more example for um, for example, we have two tables. Uh, we have properties and owners, and in properties table we have apartments and we have buildings. So apartments uh, place it in buildings and they have uh, this building ID, so it's self-relation to the table. So let's start building our fancy query with uh, SQL Alchemy. Uh, we do in simple select from the properties table. We just select information which we want, like building ID, owner, and sale price. And we want to get the properties which are for sale and which has sale price. So simple select. Uh, then we can add more level uh, where we're doing select from the previous select. So, uh, but here we want to replace uh, the owner ID with user uh, with username. So we have to join users and we simply replace it. Then we decide that we need to go deeper and we add one more level. So we built level three in which, so we have building ID so we can group by our apartments and get the total price of the all apartments which are for sale in this building. So uh, we're doing group by, uh, we apply uh, the functions that we need uh, and uh, it's very readable. And on the last uh, level, we can we have only unique uh, building ID, so we can join building related information here. So we have only rows which we want to to join. Uh, so we can add like total apartment uh, amount uh, to the to the building. So uh, your query would be look like this. So it's select from select from select from select, and on each level you do in like join, group by, again join. So this is the freedom I'm talking about. So uh, SQL Alchemy allows you to build any type of such queries, which is really cool. Uh, another example about um, Django limitations and uh, readability. Uh, imagine the case we also work with properties. Uh, so we want to find the first price, uh, which is bigger than 1 million. And then we want to get all properties which has the same price which we just found. So the query we want to build uh, is like this. Uh, so we uh, put uh, like where sale price equals to and aggregation over all the table by our condition. Let's try to do it in Django. Uh, our first attempt would be to use aggregate, but aggregate uh, queries are evaluated immediately, so it will doesn't work for us because we have to queries uh, to database, to trips, which is not performant. Uh, so we want to use subqueries. Subqueries use with, uh, uh, worked with uh, query sets, uh, and uh, that's why we have to uh, change our minimum aggregation, minimal, uh, to the such trick like order by, ascending by price, and get the first one. So it will get the minimum price, but as you see in our select we have uh, also order by, limit one, and it's, it's not readable, and if you see order by or distinct account in your SQL query, they are not performant, and uh, this is not the way that you want to build queries if you work with big amounts of data. So we can leverage underlying on public API, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, so as you see, we have 
a query set dot query add annotation. So we manually add uh, uh, this annotation which we want. Its summary says that it should be applied over the whole table, and we actually get the query which we want. Uh, but yeah, it's not recommended in the Django documentation, so it's up to up to you. Do you want to use it or not? And one more way, uh, we can subclass subqueries, and we can override template. Uh, but uh, yeah, we also get uh, the uh, SQL which we want. But this solution is too raw as for me. Uh, so. On the other hand, with the SQL Alchemy, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, as you see on the first line, we build in also select, and in the second line, in the where, we simply put this select into the condition, and it will do all the magic, and we will get the query which we want. Uh, more limitations in Django ORM uh, joins. Uh, you can't join tables which are not related. If they don't have relation, you totally don't have ability to do joins. Uh, you can't do right outer join, uh, but yeah, it's very rare, but sometimes it happens, but I have to mention it. Uh, also, Django decides for you uh, when to make inner or left outer join, and you not, uh, you doesn't know uh, what's happened underneath uh, if you don't print query, or you, you, can, you, you can't uh, change it from left outer to inner if you, can, if you want to simply cut uh, out uh, some rows which has no values. Uh, and uh, Django also generates for you this uh, join condition on condition, and you can barely customize it. Uh, you can't get rid of it. You can't change this default. You can only use filter duration, mm, which will add uh, end, uh, and that's actually all. So you can't provide or or some more explicit logic, some some more uh, complex logic uh, to do join. Uh, Recursive common table expressions are also not supported by Django yet. Uh, it's uh, useful when you work with the roles which has uh, like parent ID and there are, uh, it's uh, point to another row which has parent ID, another row, or another row, and you want to uh, take all of them and make some aggregation or calculation over them. So uh, currently you can do it with raw SQL or SQL Alchemy. Uh, also, it, there is a library like Django City Forest, uh, but it has limitations and it implement, implemented uh, via extra, uh, but extra would be deprecated, so it's not recommended to use. So this library is not, not usable currently. Mm, one more example about uh, how Django syntax is uh, uh, far from SQL. So it's actually from Django documentation. I like it very much. So as you see, we have book, we have authors, we have store uh, stores. And uh, if we do in this annotation in one line, so of an, uh, aggregation of multiple tables, so we get the wrong aggregation. So in fact, uh, instead of subqueries, uh, it will be a join. So you simply m uh, multi multiply amount of rows, and all your aggregation will produce wrong result. Uh, count could be fixed with distinct true, so it will kick out all uh, rows which uh, are redundant, but uh, actually other aggregations uh, which will produce the result which you don't actually want to, to get. So this is if you not read documentation precise enough, you could fail in such issue. So to sum up, uh, it's hard to read advanced queries in Django. It's hard to understand uh, what's going on SQL level. And uh, yeah, it takes time uh, to convert a query from SQL to Python if you design it somewhere. And uh, it's not so flexible, so some parts you can't change, or you have to uh, change your original SQL query to make Django to be able to build it. Um, uh, but this is not a problem in 95% of the cases. Uh, 95 is the number from my head. So uh, usually it's okay. We have ability to switch to raw SQL. And if you have a uh, few such places, it's not an issue and it doesn't hurt maintainability of our pro uh, product. Uh, but if you build a data analysis application where you have only aggregations, it really could hurt. It's like the same slide as you saw. Uh, so it's it's okay to look at such tool like SQL Alchemy uh, for such type of project. So here is a brief tutorial for you how to start and uh, what you have to expect uh, with this integration. 
First of all, you have to create engine. Uh, it's a global variable which describes your connection to database. Uh, and uh, SQL Alchemy comes by default with connection pooling functionality. So you get a queue pool. Uh, but if you want your connection to behave uh, the same as a Django, um, work, uh, like Django connection, you have to disable pooling with no pool. Um, from architecture point of view, your application would, would look like this. So you have one instance, you have uh, UGI, uh, you have uh, four workers, which are processes, each of them configured to have eight threads, and each thread manage its own connection. So you have 32 Django connections and 32 SQL Alchemy connections. Uh, so likely later when you get the user, so maybe when your instances have, uh, start scaling, so you would like to add some connection pooling wire like PG Bouncer, for example, if you use Postgres, because for Postgres, uh, it forks a process for each connection, so it's quite expensive to hold connections. It takes at least 10 megabytes of RAM. So if you have two instances, you just simply lost uh, 1.2 gigabytes of RAM simply to hold these connections. So that's why connection pooling wire uh, would be recommended for you if, if your application grow. Uh, then you need to understand uh, how you will work with the tables. Uh, so you have few options. Uh, there are two libraries uh, which allows you to integrate SQL Alchemy with Django. Uh, first of them, Alchemy, it uh, has a mapping of the Django fields and it's built uh, SQL Alchemy representation of this field, of these tables, and attach it to the models. Uh, another one, uh, it's table reflection. It's uh, used, uh, it's SQL Alchemy um, technique which uh, allows you, like, like here, you say, okay, I have this table, I want to get uh, Python representation of, uh, of this table. So it generates it for you, but it takes some time, so you have to cache it, uh, maybe on application launch. Uh, also, you can define your tables explicitly or define within line expressions. Uh, if you define explicitly, it's look like uh, Django models, uh, but you can keep it more simpler because we only read the data, so you can provide only names. Uh, of the table, of the columns, uh, but uh, I also advise you to specify foreign keys because uh, SQL Alchemy automatically pick up uh, the, this relation, so you have not to specify on condition for joins, so it would be a bit simpler in code. Um, how you can use uh, such tables? So you build a query and you have C attribute which stores uh, columns and you use it like a reference and the uh, result which you get, uh, each row of result is a row proxy, which actually behaves like uh, name it tuple or like tuple or like dictionary, so it's very handy. Uh, and also it's possible to define your tables and columns uh, within line expressions, they are lightweight. Um, so you simply put the names in the query, or, but if you have to uh, keep the reference uh, for the column, uh, to the table, which is refers to, you can define it like this, so uh, the usage would be like on the previous slide. Um, actually, that's all what you need to know, uh, but did somebody say it tests? Um, tests is not uh, so straightforward. Uh, it has some pitfalls and uh, something which is worth to mention. Uh, so first of all, if you remember, we created in Genesis a global variable, so once the interpreter will read this line, uh, it will evaluate it, so we can't use uh, all right settings, we can't use PyTest uh, fixtures or hooks uh, to change the setting because our line would be already evaluated, so likely you will have to introduce uh, a function like this, so if it's test, it adds add, uh, test prefix for you, uh, otherwise you will lose your <laughs> data. Uh, another interesting uh, feature, which I face it, um, it's how PyTest work with uh, cursors. So if you have um, a result proxy, it's uh, actually a wrapper around a DB API cursor, and you have ability to iterate over the rows, so you don't load all of them into memory, you're just iterating across them. So you have a function like process rows, and maybe somewhere inside there is uh, you write test and there is exception and it fails. So PyTest will mark this test as failed and it will hang on forever because uh, it doesn't allow garbage collector to close the connection. Usually it's, does, uh, usually it's 
performed automatically. So you have to do such tricks like, uh, for example, write a decorator, uh, which applied to this function which iterate and produce exception, for example, in case of some error. Uh, so you simply uh, run across the all arguments. Uh, and if it's a result proxy, if it's your cursor, you close and erase exception. Uh, but it yeah, looks not so straightforward. Um, and the most important thing which you have to keep in mind when you develop such type of application is that you have two connections, and each of these connections have its own uh, uh, transaction isolation level. So if you use this case and you populate the database with model mummy or uh, factory boy, uh, it will happen in a Django connection. So for test case, in start of the each test, uh, Django creates transaction for you, but it doesn't commit it in the end. It makes a rollback. So transaction is never committed, and SQL Alchemy doesn't see the data which was produced in this test. So uh, this is some kind of issue. Uh, but still, you can use test case in your application, uh, but just keep in mind that uh, yeah, it, it, uh, when you write tests for the code which works with one connection and you populate uh, the test uh, database with the same connection. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you populated the data with SQL Alchemy connection, you have to clean your tables by yourself between the tests, maybe with hooks or fixtures. And also, it's, theoretically, it's possible to share the data which was created and not committed, so you need to change the tr uh, transaction isolation level on the SQL Alchemy connection to read uncommitted, but uh, yeah, it's not recommended, but it's, it's possible. And uh, also, you, yeah. you can use transaction test case, and there is no, no issues with that, uh, so it's fine, but uh, such tests work slower because there are, mm, in how this tr transaction test case works. They are uh, doing a post-migrate signal between each test, so they truncate all the tables which have models, and then they launch post-migrate uh, signal which uh, creates permissions and content types, uh, so it takes some time, so such tests would be slower. Uh, yeah, and if you work with tables which doesn't have relation to Django models, you also have to clean up them between tests by yourself. Uh, so drawbacks. Uh, it's a bit hard to start because it's not too much information about such integration and there are no such like tutorial like, okay, you have to do this. Um, but documentation of SQL Alchemy is quite good, but sometimes it lacks uh, some examples. Uh, but overall, it's, it's nice to work with. Um, and um, yeah, you can find that it's not uh, very easy to work with uh, uh, if you want to debug your query which you made in Python, so you print it into the console, and you, s you will see that all parameters, which you have maybe 20 or 30 of them, if it's hard query, uh, they, uh, it would be a placeholders instead of values which you uh, wanted to be there. So it's a bit annoying to insert them manually, because uh, this functionality is done by uh, DB API, uh, which uh, doing this, uh, this safe insert of the parameters into the query, so SQL Alchemy doesn't have such functionality of escaping your values uh, to uh, omit uh, this uh, in injection, SQL injections. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, there are some solutions, uh, but it's not so straightforward, so it's a bit annoying. And uh, you have uh, slower tests, because likely you will use more transaction test cases which are slower, but it also depends. Um, and yeah, you have more connections to database, but the most uh, important thing to keep in mind is that you can't no longer use li libraries like Django filters or pagination because they designed it to work with query sets, and now you have only like dictionaries or tuples or lists, so you have to find some uh, query set independent uh, libraries or come with your own solutions to cover this gap. Um, but uh, let's talk about benefits. So you actually get the full control over SQL level, which is really cool, and it gives you freedom to build whatever you want. Uh, yeah, it's faster to express SQL in Python code, so if you have some data analysis guy which bring you tons of queries and say, okay, build these queries in Python, it's really easy to build them, modify. Um, yeah, and if you have some layer which uh, creates such queries for you dynamically, 
uh, you have uh, in SQL Alchemy, you have all abstractions over SQL, so you can use them like building blocks and you can build whatever you want. It's very handy to do this. And yeah, of course, readability, maintainability, and, and performance, because actually what you design it in SQL, you, you generate it from Python. So if you uh, know SQL well enough, so you will do uh, correct queries and performance. Uh, that's all. Uh, I don't know, do we have time for questions? We do have a few, t uh, few minutes for questions. Uh, so if anyone wants to come to the front, um, or if we have anyone online with Django, uh, DjangoCon QA hashtag, we can answer a few questions. Uh, hello, thanks for the talk. Um, one question coming to my mind. You said you are having two database connections, which is obvious because you have Django and SQL Alchemy. Um, did you explore the possibility of writing a, um, I think in SQL Alchemy it's a database dialect which would bridge over to the Django connection and reuse the underlying database API connection instead of having the two? Uh, sorry, could you repeat? Uh, so um, there would be the possibility to write a custom backend for SQL Alchemy mm -hmm. which would then reuse the Connection the Django from connection. Django. Did you explore uh, this? Problem? Actually, there is uh, a library. Currently, it's under development. It's like uh, Django SQL Alchemy, and it tries to be inserted into the wire which uh, generates these queries. So there are some attempts to merge them together, uh, but this is, as, I, as far as I know, they're currently under development, and likely it, it would be not so easy and straightforward. So I, I haven't tried this, but uh, I'm not sure that this um, good good way to, to move your application. Okay, thanks for the um, talk, it was interesting. Um, I probably can guess uh, the answer, but I wanted to know from you, uh, you haven't talked about uh, the, um, uh, the admin stuff in Django. Mm -hmm. Would it be possible to use the SQL Alchemy with the admin? Probably not. Uh, no. Uh, I, I, I believe there are some attempts also to bring this uh, to, to the Django stack, but uh, the solution which I'm currently talking about, it's mostly about yeah, designing your queries which would be displayed for, for the users. Maybe uh, you can use uh, it if you uh, start customizing a lot, your Django admin, uh, maybe you can insert there, but uh, it's n it will be not easily integrated. And mm -hmm. Django admin, it's mostly, it's ORM, so it works with single roles, but this is aggregation. So mm -hmm. uh, you can have built custom dashboard somewhere to show the numbers, uh, overall numbers, but if you want to work with single roles, so you have to stick with uh, Django ORM. Okay, thank you. We have a little bit less than one minute, so we can answer about one more question. <laughs> okay, I will try to be fast. Um, so you mentioned in your talk that you start usually with a big SQL query that you already have. So I was wondering if you explored to uh, store that query as a stored procedure in the database and uh, query and using query sets to uh, launch the stored procedures and what are the pros and cons compared to uh, SQL Alchemy in the project? Um, I think it's mostly about how, how do you then um, manage uh, and um, maintain your stored procedures because if you have everything in Python code in Python project it's easily to manage to change and to influence in that so uh, mm, uh, I can say about uh, pros and cons it's from my point of view it's mostly about how it will be maintainable in the long run so uh, my opinion it's better to have everything in, in Python and not move this functionality to database because it, it would be not so explicit and not transparent what will going on. So yeah. Okay. Thank you.